Shani Fannies. Welcome to Educating Shani. I'm Shani and I survived an eating disorder. Hi Shani, hi. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new. Okay, today we're gonna do the first, well, it's not the first eating disorder story that I've reacted to, but it's kind of the first in this new project of, I'm just, if you wanna send in a video of your eating disorder story, I will react to it. It doesn't have to do with Eugenia, just your eating disorder story in general. If it happens to include Eugenia, that's your story and that's fine. If not, that's fine. You'll still get chosen. Hopefully, keep sending them in. I'm getting a lot and I'll do as many as I can. But today we're gonna react to our first one, or I'm gonna react to it, um, from a girl named Ashley. And she seems really cool. I watched like two minutes of it. It's like 30 minutes long, so this might be a longer one. But what I already see of her with like the two minutes that I watched, I think she's adorable and I can tell she's really awesome and strong. So I'm excited to watch this video. So let's get into it. Love it. And I'll link her channel below if you want to check her out. She makes a lot of videos. She's awesome. Hey guys, how's it going? It's Ashley. So I wanted to make this video because a lot of people ask me, like, how did your eating disorder even start? And I do have a video on this already. It was my Draw My Life video. But uh, the issue, one of, I'll get into that. <laughs> the issues I have with that video is that, one, it was my first time ever editing with Premiere, and it was... Teach me. Complete trash, in my opinion, now. Please teach now me. Now that I know how to, like, edit and properly voice record and do the thing. So it was uh, my draw my life. And another reason why that video is not necessarily... Because that video is about, like, everything. You know, draw my life. And eating disorders just happen to be part of that. So there's a lot of other things just mixed in there. Um, oh, my gosh. You remind me really so to... much of my best friend. You talk just like her. Like, you've got the same mouth movements and stuff. It's so weird. You sound like you guys have the same voice tone. It's so, it's like blowing my mind. Do with eating disorder. So I think that like drew people away. Like, oh, let's hear. Um, it don't really have to do with eating disorder. So I think that like drew people away. Like, oh, let's, you know. <laughs> um, so this story is going to be um, just about how my eating disorder started probably a little bit in the middle and then like how I got to the point right now. Um, maybe not so much in the middle because I think the middle is kind of boring because <laughs> it lasted for like five years. So it's just like five years of like starving, eating, binging, purging, you know, you know, you know the works. Um, so, so fun. And you guys have been asking for some eating disorder story times. I know you guys have been curious about this. Um, and I, I have absolutely no notes for this. I'm completely just talking because, I mean, it's my story. I can remember anything. Oh, I remember what I was going to say. So, um, since eating disorders are a mental disorder and there's a lot of factors that play into it, I will be mentioning other aspects of my life and how they influence my eating disorder and the course of how my eating disorder manifested throughout various points in my life. So I will be mentioning other things, but I will try to explain them the best I can and That's all the important. characters get their moments <laughs> you know that's important right. good for you so um <clears> this <throat> I started having distorted eating in about middle school and it wasn't like an actual eating disorder it was just like like for example like Halloween like I had to look good in my outfit so like a few days before Halloween I would try to eat as less as possible to like look good for my it, you know, failed logic, but I was a child. <laughs> so, um, that was in middle school, and I remember kind of just eating whatever I wanted to, unless I was, like, on one of these, like, diet, couple-day diet things, um, and I remember feeling extremely distressed that every year I had to buy new jeans, because that meant I was getting bigger. Even if it was just, like, the next size up, I was extremely distressed by this new weight gain with growing and maturing in my life. And I was extremely... It's so sad that kids can think of that, that, like, you as a little kid were, th were worried about having to get a bigger jean size. Like, little kids should be worried about 
playing outside and scraping their knee, not like how they're gonna look in pants and what size they're gonna need next year. Like, it's so sad when eating disorders start in childhood. It's just so wrong. I'm so sorry that that happened to you, Ashley. Upset by it. But I didn't really let anyone know that. I just kind of like kept it in myself. Um, and I was kind of just like, oh, hey, I'm a, like, I would call myself like chubby, but I wasn't nearly chubby. I might throw some images around here. And that's, wait, before I do that, I'm actually going to give a trigger warning there will probably be some images in this just because I want to help visually I illustrate my story. Since this isn't a draw of my life, I'm not drawing myself. So I will show pictures of myself and That's your warning. I'll probably mention some numbers just not to shock you, but in order to better illustrate what was happening and to give you a better idea of where I was in my life. So I will be showing pictures of numbers and right here I will show some images of uh, pre-eating disordered me. So like me in middle school. Um, so we get to high school. Oh, well, I'll actually back up a little bit. Um, so in middle school I was struggling with my sexuality because uh, I grew up in a very Christian household and um, I kind of like gathered the ideas from other people around me like ooh why are we using like oh that's so gay like you know why are we using gay as an insult so that kind of like oh my gosh like back in my day i'm sure i even did it and i apologize if i did but yeah back in my day and maybe her day she looks way younger than me what the heck um it was an insult people would use it in a derogatory they would be like ew that's so gay or ew he's so gay like it was so ah uh, I'm so glad that the world is getting better. This image of my brain is just like, ooh, this is a bad thing. Yeah. So I was kind of just like, what in the world is wrong with me being attracted to women? Um, so I was struggling with a lot of that, and a lot of that came with like self-hatred. and All these things were kind of pulling together on this, and it was like the perfect storm, you know? Like everything just decided to factor into this in a certain way. Mm -hmm. So I was struggling with my sexuality, and... Um, so the summer between eighth grade and high school, um, well, every summer since I was a kid, I was going to this, uh, summer camp called Camp Crosley, where you would, like, pack your things up, you would go stay in a cabin with, like, other girls, uh, for, like, a week, and there's, like, boys' cabins, too, um, and you had, like, camp counselors, you had, like, all these activities, it was very fun, and, um, the summer between eighth grade and high school, I met these two friends there. Um, I'm not really in contact with them now, so I'm going to use the fake names that I used in my Draw My Life video because I don't know if they want to be part of my story. I'm pretty sure they actually hate me now. So <laughs> anyway, They're lost, because of what least. happens, and I'll get to what happens. Um, so Danielle and Lucy is, I believe those are the fake names that I used in my Draw My Life video. Um, and I'm sorry, this video is probably going to be very long. Okay, it's your story. <laughs> but I hope you all enjoy it. I am. <laughs> should have said that in the beginning, but you know, afterthought, you know. No script. We gotta love it. Um, She's so cute. So, Danielle and Lucy, and we instantly, like, connected. Like, I was into, like, Japanese th things back then and Japanese nice. music. And um, I remember, like, connecting with them, like, on that level. And we had a lot of the same interests and everything. We were both like, we were all like weird. <laughs> um, so. Weird is the best. So right? we exchanged like numbers at the end of this stay and they were on Tumblr and I didn't have a Tumblr, it, but apparently like all these like fan cultures and everything, everything that we were interacting with was on Tumblr. So I was like, ooh, I'll get a Tumblr and I'll add you guys on it. And we were like, we became like really close because the way my Tumblr worked was it became my like secret account because like no one else knew about it except these two friends. And I like, because we started off like on a clean slate, like I just met them through camp. Like they didn't know anything else about me. So because we started off on these, this clean slate, they didn't have any like preconceived notions about me. So I told them things that like I didn't tell other people in my life because we had this sort of relationship. Mm -hmm. Um, So I made this secret account and it became flooded with like 
obviously like fan cultures and like Ruby and Hatsune Miku and like all these um like fan cultures that we were a part of but it also became a place of gay pride and self-harm ideas not like ideas but like pictures and gifts that, that allude to the like self-harm and depression and like all this stuff like you know like the tumblr gifts like oh i'm so depressed you know like i showed a little bit of it in my uh draw my life video if you want some imagery of like what kind of goes on in those sort of blogs um so i, I showed that imagery over there um but so I was becoming more and more eating disordered as I gained weight because now it's my freshman year of high school. I, I kept uh, gaining a little bit of weight and I was still distressed by this all around these feelings of feeling like not good enough for myself, not good enough for others, hating myself. For the record, you were beautiful then and you're beautiful now and you're perfect just the way you are. I think you know that by now, but I just had to say it because you're really beautiful inside, outside. Upside down side, back side, front side, side side, hip side, inside out. Um, self harm thoughts because at this point I have had started self harming. I start, started self harming in like uh, middle school, okay. not like serious self harming, like scratching, you know, and like very very shallow um, stuff or like hitting my arm with a spoon. Um, mm. So like. I say minor in the self-harm part, but, like, all self-harm is valid, you know? Um, and yours doesn't have to be, like, bad enough to get help. So just mm -hmm. know, like, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying I had minor self-harm in middle school. And as it progressed to high school, um, yeah, I did start, to, like, actually, like, cutting. Compared to you later, it was minor. And, yeah, it's, it's, I get what you're saying. You're not saying that it's a... It's not a big deal if you're only scratching yourself or hitting yourself with a spoon. I know that that's not what you're saying, but I'll reiterate what you just said, which is that it's not about that. It's that you are comparing to, you're trying to show how bad it was later by showing um, what not severe is, was for you. So that's what she's saying. With a razor. Like, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying I had minor self-harm in middle school. And as it progressed to high school, um, I did start, like, actually, like, cutting with a razor mm -hmm. and um, doing that. So all this stuff, it was now the freshman year of high school, and this came around to around my birthday in March. And for, for the next coming years, it always seemed like I was depressed on my birthday. Like, until, like, these past couple years like these past two years I have been like depressed every year on my birthday I just I don't know how it happens just circumstances just every single time it seems like I get depressed on my birthday I was like god damn it <laughs> it must be my birthday again you know like everything's going wrong like everything seems to go wrong in spring and you'll see that as a point I'll make uh, towards the end of the video but everything goes wrong in spring like why <laughs> you're so cute um, Aww. so in March, uh, this kind of happened at very close proximity, but I think I remember the order of it. So it was around like the 15th, 16th of March, um, when this happened. So, uh, Danielle and Lucy, um, almost forgot their fake names there. <laughs> so da I've been there. Yeah. Danielle and Lucy. Um, that's what editing is for. <laughs> so they kind of like came out to me as being, um, like a couple and I'm just like, um, hello, you guys knew I was struggling with this stuff and mm. I, I felt like betrayed. I'm just like, how could you guys do uh. this? Like I felt so alone for all this life and to find out that you guys were dating and for one thing, I had a crush on one of them. So I just Aww. felt, I felt really hurt and left out yeah. by that. And I know that's the wrong feeling to feel. Well, it's valid. is any feeling really wrong when it's no. your experience? Mm -mm. But it's valid. I felt really extremely hurt by this and betrayed. Mm. So the next day, my mom came t to me and she said that she had found my secret account. And I remember her saying that that was the worst day of her life was when she found out I was gay. And her response to this was, in my opinion, very inappropriate. 
because instead of focusing on like my child is depressed my child may be self-harming my child may have an eating disorder like seeing all these kind of posts on my account and she chose to focus on my child is gay and that's wrong um so so i think her response was not inappropriate and to this day my mom has come around a little bit we're on a better term now um and she's been more accepting um because i've been trying to like communicate more properly to her and show her parts of my life you know like let her in instead of pushing her out Uh, because for so long my mom was like my worst bully yeah and i mean that by after she found out that i was gay she made me delete my account um stop contact with uh, Danielle and Lucy, I was never contact them ever again. So there's my online support system gone. There's my two best friends who knew things about me that no one else knew. They were gone. Um, and I just, I felt so alone. And that was the, that was the trigger that really kicked off the eating disorder. Like when that happened, I just stopped eating like numbers. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> So that happened March 16th. And I was on YouTube during this time because I got my school issued iPad around uh, eighth grade. And so I started posting YouTube videos. So you can visually see, I'm not making this up. You can visually see my weight loss. And that first month that I uh, was struggling with anorexia, um, I basically tried my hardest to eat absolutely as little as I possibly could and exercise the crap load out of it um to the point where that first month and i'll i'll probably put some pictures up here i'll scooch over for a little bit um that first month i lost 30 pounds wow not even joking wow. like i looked at myself in pictures and like i didn't even recognize me like i looked at because i had like a band concert like final end of the year band concert and um like, I didn't even recognize myself in the pictures that my parents took of me. I was like, wait, that's me? No, that's what I want to look like. That's not me. That can't be me. Um, so, yeah, I'll scooch back over. <laughs> so after this point, I started losing weight. I got down. I was like, uh, like 119 when I started my anorexia. Uh, that's what I what you started at Um, that's what I was before and I that summer I like started eating a little bit more and I think around the summer is when I discovered binging because I didn't want to lose any more weight because I wanted to stay under the radar of like uh doctor's appointments and stuff Mm -hmm. like that's how I rationalized it in my head like I don't want to get too skinny right now so I gotta eat something but I don't know how to eat so I gotta binge it Mm. um that's so interesting. I hovered around like the low 90s for the rest of my high school career. Oh my gosh. Career, what did I say that? My high school experience, whatever. <laughs> um, so I hovered around the low 90s and I'll probably put some pictures up there. But after a while, I discovered binging and I was binging maybe, maybe once a week to once a month, that variety. But I... Um, Hmm. there were points at which in high school, like I tried, tried to recover by eating like less than enough calories, but like sustained over a couple days. And I would just be like, I can't, I can't do this. And I Hmm. wasn't able to do it on my, on my own because like I lacked the core motivation. I just knew I was absolutely miserable. Um, and there's a lot that really happened. Well, I say everything was kind of the same in high school because like I was just um like I was it's kind of like a slow suicide is what I was doing because like every single day of my high school I wanted to die like I did not want to live um and eating was a way that I moderated that because my mom had become um physically abusive because of my uh sexual orientation we went it was this whole other thing like we went to conversion therapy um and then to regular therapy and then you know i'm so sorry nothing was really fixing me in her opinion so um 
So after a while, I discovered purging. I think it was on accident, actually, when I had, like, an enormous binge and I just couldn't keep it down. Um, or one time when I was, like, binging just all day long, you know? Because I remember I would wake up at, like, 5 a.m. before school to, like, eat this massive chocolate bar and, like, all this stuff. And then I would wait a couple hours, and then at school lunch, I would get, like, a bunch of fries or whatever. And, uh... And I would just binge, like, these smaller binges throughout the day. And then, like, after school, um, because I was learning to drive, too. So at this point, I could go places, and my parents didn't really have to know where I was at. Or I would tell them someplace, and I would go behind the abandoned Kmart and, like, binge and purge. Or, um, so I'd have, like, these binges, like, all around the day. Like, after school, I would just be, like, I remember my last classes, I remember just, uh, like, I'd be taking, like, a math test or something, because for whatever reason, math was always, like, my last subject. Um, and I would just be sitting there thinking, scrolling through my iPad, because I would, like, look at, like, the food and stuff. Like, I would be looking at, um, what's it called? Like, the pictures of the pretty food, and, like, the, oh, my God, the food. And I'd be looking at those pictures right before I binge just because, like, I wanted to, like, it was part of that, like, interacting with food without interacting with food mm-hmm. that eating disordered people do, like, you want to make yourself food, hungry. touching food, yeah. smelling food, you know, like, you, a way to consume food that wasn't eating it. Um, so that was high school. Um, I could probably go into high school a little bit deeper, but we'll leave it at that for now, I guess. Oh, yeah, um. I did actually, a way that I would like track my calories was I would get on my iPad and I would take a picture of those like, like year long calendars and like every day I would, in every spot I would write how much I had. I still have some of these too, if you guys would like to see that in another video. Um, me like explaining what was going on, like at all those times. Um, but I still have a couple of those and I would like color code it, like green was good. Blue was low restricting, um, and green was, like, good, you know. Um, orange was binge and purge. Red is just binge. And purple was I ate green calories, but I over-exercised. Um, and I would, like, you know, the calendar thing. <laughs> it is insane to me hearing other people's stories in my own of how powerful Ed can be and how powerful those voices can be and how obsessive it is and how, I mean, color labeling every day to represent how bad or how well you were doing or to represent different behaviors. Like that is completely obsessive behavior and that's what an eating disorder is. And the thing that keeps it going is hiding it and um, being ashamed of it and hiding it because it wants you to feel ashamed. It wants you to feel like you're a piece of shit. It wants you to feel like you need to be obsessing over your body and food and all these things and making yourself miserable and not being able to focus on anything else in life. That's what it wants. And I commend so much Ashley and anyone who's willing to speak up, but Ashley's being so brave and she's sharing everything with us. And please leave a comment of support for her. She is wonderful. Please go subscribe to her channel. I can't wait to go and check out more of her channel. I think she's awesome, but we still have some left, so let's continue. Recovered from my eating disorder, um, precise. Um, and I would like, you know, the calendar thing. <laughs> um, so how I recovered from my eating disorder, um, this was senior year of high school. I was about, I was about at my breaking point because, um, because I would get like internal pains and I would like, I, like I realized I was dying. I was um, at like BMI 14 to 16 for such a long time. Like my body just couldn't sustain it anymore. Um, like I knew I was dying. And um, around this time I started dating. This was around March again. And the reason I started dating this person was because, I, I don't know, like, they weren't a good person, but, um, 
another way to punish but yourself? But they gave me something better than what I was experiencing, so I date this person. Wow. Uh, his name is Tim. I do not give a shit if he doesn't want his name in here. That says a lot that you're saying that dating somebody who is horrible to you was less pain than what you're already going through. That says a lot. You're a strong ass woman, let me tell you. Cause I talk, but they gave me something better than what I was experiencing. So I did this person. Uh, his name was Tim. I do not give a shit if he doesn't want his name in here. Cause Good. I talked about him so much and everyone knows it's him anyway. So we'll, we'll just put that name out there. You have that right to talk um, about him if he so hurt you like that. I have a couple of videos, I think a, one video on how he was toxic but I didn't get into absolutely everything he did um and I can make a new video if you guys want a story time about him we dated for two and a half years and he kind of this is where my draw my life video ends is where I was starting to date him so like this is the extra info that you didn't get in that video um so he was not a good person he was manipulative and controlling and very toxic and abusive in nearly every way except physical um and i could get into like specifics on what he actually did but that's not this video um but i started recovering recovering over that summer after after senior year and i didn't really recover during that time i started eating more regular but the thing is i stopped binging so during that time i kept losing weight because I was 18 now and I was like well I'm 18 so I can do whatever I want I can get to that low weight that I wanted to get to uh, so I eventually got to my um goal weight of that time which was like 83 BMI 14.1 I think um so I got down to this goal weight over that summer and I kind of realized like I remember taking a picture of my shadow and just seeing how absolutely long my limbs are because like my breaking point was when my family took a trip to Maine and I remember I this was the morning I had bought a granola bar or what I thought was a granola bar for breakfast and we were going on the hike so I was like unwrapping this granola bar and I saw that it was actually a chocolate bar so I like took one bite of it and then I like tossed it in the woods because I was like so upset that I had bought a chocolate bar. Like, how dare I eat chocolate, you know? So, and then I like hiked up this mountain and I have this picture of me going like this on top of this mountain. And that was my breaking point because I realized I'm just like, I want to recover. Like, I don't want this anymore. I need to stop. Um, so I remember I fought, Tim was my main supporter. Um, and I remember I would like, I broke so much during my recovery. I, it took me two years to get to a like stable, not like recovered, cause like you can never fully recover from mm -hmm. an addiction. But I agree. Um, as, as best recovered as probably you can be, as probably yeah. I am now, cause I have sustained that recovery, you know, that recovered state. Um, I don't know if there's a better way to say that, but, um, that's why I say survived instead of recovered, because I know I'll never be like fully recovered, but I consider myself in recovery and the survived means like I got through it and I survived um, and beat having those behaviors. But of course it will always be in our minds, but um, stopping your behaviors and learning how to live life, even though it is always in your mind, it is what I consider to be but I mean, I'm new to it. I'm no expert. I'm just saying that for me, that's how it's been so far. But I don't know about you. So, oh, uh, where was I? <laughs> so I was fighting Tim and because I was fighting him because I wanted him to tell me to eat. I wanted to hear those words, mm. you need to eat. I wanted him to tell me to eat because that gave myself permission to eat. I like couldn't do it on my own. I got text him and be like, hey, I feel faint. And he's like, you should eat because I wanted him to tell me so that I could do it. And that's kind of kind of really fucked up, but that's how it was. Um, so eventually I, I did recover. Um, and I had some slip ups. I had a lot of body image issues. 
um, around that spring of my freshman year of college, um, around that spring, I actually went to um, an outpatient treatment provided by Indiana University, um, which is where I went to, IU, and um, they set me up with a nutritionist, a therapist, and a physician, I think that's the right word, like a doctor, um, to assess my health, and I was working with those three people for the remainder of my treatment at IU, um, which lasted until... I. I kept in contact with them through that spring, and then I went back home for the summer, and then I went back there in the fall, and um, I went back there in uh, in the fall, which I was just working with my therapist in the fall, um, but then um, I had, like, a really intense, I had bipolar, which back then it was, like, untreated. Mm-hmm. Um, I am treated now. I'm on medication. Um, but I had a severe manic episode. If you don't know what that is, I will probably link my bipolar video down below. But I have a lot of videos talking about mental health in general. So I'll have to sort those out and decide what I want to link in the description. But I'll put something there, I promise. <laughs> so I had this mental breakdown, and then I took about a year off of school. And then I started at Huntington University, to which I am currently attending. I am now a senior at Huntington. Um... So the spring after I dropped out, and I'm currently making a documentary on PTSD and suicide, so stay tuned to October when that's going to come out, because I'm making a documentary on it. Awesome. Um, But when Tim broke up with me, I felt like my world was over, because he had isolated me with my friends and family. He was like this huge support system in my life that now he was like gone and because of his toxic behaviors he made me feel like he made you think you were safe with him he made you think that you were taken care of he made you think you were alone he isolated you so that you did feel alone so that you would never leave him classic abusive behavior talking to was like this huge support system in my life that now he was like gone and because of his toxic behaviors, he made me feel like so alone because I hadn't been talking to my friends and family. Like I had basically no one. So when we broke up, I thought like my life was over. I'm just like, I have no one, this is it. Um, So I had my suicide attempt. See, I was going to tie my suicide attempt to a previous point that I made way at the beginning of this video, but I forgot what that was. No script. Um, but hopefully if you're watching, you know what that point was, because I forget it. Um, so now... For those that couldn't see the screen, it says that everything wrong happens in spring. Um, but hopefully if you're watching, you know what that point was, because I forget it. Um, so now, after my suicide attempt, that has been really, like, the stage in which my life is... I'm so grateful that you survived. Because I forget it. Um, so now, after my suicide attempt, that has been really, like, the stage of which my life finally started getting better. Um, awesome. And a lot of people don't really understand that, but after my suicide attempt happened, I started to, like, build up my relationship with my friends and family again. I started living I landed my dream job I'm working at like a minor league baseball team doing video for them cool Um, that's amazing Um, yeah I think some people like to point out that like oh your life is miserable and your life is awful and I was like you clearly haven't seen me recently because see the light in my eyes Mm -hmm. like hello um I'm working on my documentary um I still have like I mean, everyone has their drama. I still have, like, minor issues that come up every now and again, but I know I'm bipolar. In a few days, I'll be better again. Which, by the way, I started tracking my bipolar on one of, like, those year calendar things that I mentioned I did with my calories. And what I do is I have a scale, like, uh, pink, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, Mm. like, manic, depressed, and I'll put these colors on this calendar. Um, There it is. 
Oh, wow. Okay. So, um... That's good. So, I think I'll end the video there. Keep accountability for how you're feeling each day. And that, that can also, like... Later, you can look back on older calendars and be like, well, I survived a pink day and a purple day and a blue day, so I can get through this. That's awesome of you. So I think I'll end the video there. If you have anything that you want story times of, please leave a comment and I will make a story time of it. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for sticking around this long. Bye. <laughs> what an amazing, brave, sweet, strong woman Ashley is. I am so proud of you. I'm so grateful that you shared our, your story with us and I'm so grateful that you shared all these things of how you got through it. Those are the messages that need to be out there. And thank you for sharing your eating disorder story. I am positive that it's gonna help someone out there to realize that they're not alone and to realize that they're still a good person and they're worthy of doing anything with their life that they want to do. So thank you for sharing that. Your story is amazing. I'm gonna go check out more of your channel. I'm gonna link her channel below for you guys if you'd like to go check it out. But I just wanna say thank you again for being brave and sharing this story and for, um, I just, these things need to be talked about and you're doing it and I'm so proud of you and I'm so grateful for you. So I love you, Ashley. And I love all of you and I'll see you probably tomorrow for another video. And remember forever and always that you're beautiful, you're worth it, and I am too. Thank you for watching, bye!